I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Welcome again to the Ex-Mormon Files. Appreciate you spending some time with us. Today, today we have Melanie with us and we appreciate her coming and sharing her story. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you were an uh, active LDS young lady, were you? Yes. Tell us about your background a little bit. Your folks, were they active? And... Yes. My mom <laughs> and dad were married in the temple. Yeah. Um, we were all, I have four sisters and we were all raised LDS. So where from at? birth, where Provo. Where you? In Provo, Utah. Yeah. A few blocks Happy from Valley, BYU. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Happy Valley, a few blocks from BYU, and um, standard, typical Mormon family, I would yeah. say. Um, my dad was the choir director, and my mom was primary uh -huh. president and relief study president. Wow. And so very involved. And yes, active. very much so, very yeah. much so. And um, I was baptized at eight. <laughs> and um, primary and young women and yes, all that stuff. Yes, did young women and girls camp and. Yeah. Um, Were those good experiences for you as you look back and um, friendships and fr stuff, I guess? Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Uh, primary was always a lot of fun with ki the other kids and, yeah. and singing and coloring and activities and things. I sure. always thought three hours was too long. I remember <laughs> even being five and six years old and just crying on the floor and wanting to go home. <laughs> now, you're um, a young lady, but do you remember back when church was like it? We used to go to priesthood like at 7 in the, the morning. The breaks, and it was broken and up. And then at Sunday school at about 11, and then we had to go back to sacrament meeting about 4.30 or 5 or something. Yeah. You're, you're, you're too I, young that for was, that, right? That was a little before my time. Yeah. I really only remember the three-hour blocks. But, <laughs> but that's plenty long, right? Yes, yeah. plenty long. Yeah. And um, did, you know, girls camp and young women's didn't really like it, never fit in, never... Yeah felt you very the included. You testimonies around the fire? You yeah. Usually did that. Yeah. For, I think for like my experience and my ward and the girls and all the kids that we all grew up with, um, it wasn't super spiritual. It wasn't? <laughs> no. Um, I, it, maybe it was just our ward or no, I, I the think kids in our neighborhood. It was more gossipy just, and meanness and fighting and cattiness. Well, and just, so. Just being young teenage, but I think, yeah, teenager, typical so. teenage girl type experience, yeah. but yeah. Did you take seminary? I did. Oh. Uh, it was a requirement in our family. Okay, so you graduated. So, uh, yeah, I did. I got kicked out ten times. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> and with enough consecutive absences, oh. they would kick me out. And my mom would ask for them to let me back in. Oh. And I would go twice, and then I would stop going. I hated it. I really hated it. Really? Um, I didn't enjoy the topics. I didn't enjoy the conversation. Several times people asked me to talk about um, my dad dying and um, at seminary, and I didn't want to, so I would oh. stop going. And then oh. after I got kicked out the 10th time, they wouldn't let me go back, so my mom made me do packets. So I had binders and packets that I did at home. I filled out. In order to graduate. Yeah. Yeah, you had you had to graduate. You had to in my family, or, you know, if if you weren't going to church on Sundays, or if you weren't going to seminary, or you weren't doing the, you were your church stuff, to. you didn't get to drive. 
Oh. So no transportation yeah. was not an option for a teenager. So what do you think now as a parent, mm -hmm. or uh, you have children? Yes, I do. Okay, sorry, uh, we didn't know that. Um, looking back now as a parent, do you, you do you see their plan for you, the wisdom of what they were doing, or do you um, feel like they were being? Well, well they, my parents are, were and are not typical parents. I think my parents are more more strict and results kind of driven, oh. not very nurturing and affectionate. So mm -hmm. it was rules and law. This is rule, this is law. <laughs> yeah. And I really do feel like a big um, push for me and my sisters away from the LDS church was it was a punishment. If you didn't go to church on Sunday, you did dishes for a week. If you didn't go to church on Sunday, you didn't get to drive. If you didn't go to mutual, if you didn't yeah. go to young women's, you there were punishments. So church was a punishment, and well, we all hated it because it was. So. Yeah, did you have any other friends maybe that fell into this category that you were aware of? Similar people, to... Yeah, people that were kind of under pressure to perform. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a of, lot of friends when I was living in Provo. We moved from Provo to Brigham City when yeah. I was 15. But in Provo, I think I knew a lot of girls in my grade and not so much in my ward, maybe one. But there were a lot of people that suffered from eating disorders, like, and... Just um, maybe because of the perfect, pressure. It was perf pressure, perfectionism. I saw people, I felt the pressure of, you know, wow. you have to have the nice dress for church. You yeah. have to do, you know, everything that people tell you to do. You've got to do your baptisms for the dead. and, and Just a performing kind yeah. of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think about some, many of the families that I know have at least one or two children that have question things or been a little tougher to get to church and I guess there's different methods of, of yeah. getting people to church but I'm, I'm just wondering as a parent do you do you feel like um, or looking back now do you do you feel like those just assume that they're going to be follow the gospel of Joseph Smith I call it but the church along the way or eventually that they're going to come around or yeah, is absolutely. That what the, maybe the I think so. Is? Um, I've had relatives like aunts and uncles tell me that, oh, one day you'll come back. And I'm like, I finally was like, I'm never, ever, <laughs> ever coming back. <laughs> I'm not ever. So don't hold out hope because there's no way, there's no possible way. Um, my, I have four sisters and none of them are LDS anymore. And yeah, a direct result of my the way we were raised is probably yeah, to blame. I think it, church yeah. as a punishment is not a good thing, but um, also, oh, sorry. Well, no, no, you go ahead. Oh, no, it's okay. Well, I was just going to ask, were there any doctrinal issues that came up? Was, yes. I mean, it, part, of, part of leaving in, in some situations is because of the pressure and not being perfect. So mm -hmm. if I'm not going to be perfect, or like you were saying in seminary, they wanted to ask you this about that. And yeah. you didn't want to answer, so you just mm -hmm. didn't go. So do you feel like, the, um, was there anything doctrinal that kind of came up to? Well, yeah. So when I was growing up, a lot of questions that we had, a lot of questions that I would take to my parents, um, were answered by, well, that'll be figured out in <laughs> the... The next life. Yeah, in the next life. Yeah. That everyone will have a chance. Oh, you know, I, where I was worried about, you know, friends that weren't baptized or people that weren't sealed, you know, because I thought you had to, like, where are you? You're floating in the middle of nowhere if you're not sealed to your family. And mm -hmm. my mom would always say, "It'll, they'll have a chance after yeah. in the, what a, I don't even, the post-life yeah, yeah. to, to the, make the, the choice. After, and, or, yeah. and, you know, people, like women that aren't sealed, are they just off alone forever? Are they just servants or yeah, what? Like, because they can't be a god or right. goddess, whatever. <laughs> And mm -hmm. so I would get that answer all the time or a wishy-washy answer that didn't answer any of yeah. my questions. So, so you, you did end up getting a patriarchal blessing. Yeah. My mom set that up for me. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't into entirely into it. Yeah. She set it up for me. Somebody I hardly knew in Brigham City in our ward there because I, mm -hmm. I kind of did go to church because I had to, but that meant walking in the front door and out the back with my friends. So... <laughs> Um, 
So, so yeah, the, I don't know, the bishopric or whoever that I didn't even know gave it to me. Yeah. And um, when they were doing it, I was trying really hard to feel it, you know, um, to feel inspired because my mom was like, this will, you know, form your life and form your future. And this is an insight into what God has planned for you. And I kid you not, I sat there feeling this is just like, crap, this is a lie, this is wrong, this is, it just felt wrong. It and just felt so you? wrong. 18. Yeah, it was right before I graduated. Yeah. So, felt so wrong. It was just one, another, <laughs> add that to the list of things that felt wrong, that just didn't make sense in my mind, that just felt wow. wrong. Um, as a teenager, I really took issue with the priesthood. I really Why took issue that? with the priesthood because I couldn't wrap my head around. After my dad died, um, I heard comments, you know, well, you need a blessing. So we need to get some priesthood holders over here to give you a blessing. Oh, and there's no priesthood in the home. No, no yeah. priesthood in our house. Someone actually even made that comment in seminary once <laughs> that we didn't have a priesthood leader in our house. And um, I just thought it was so stupid. Sorry, no, that a 12-year-old okay. boy had more authority than my mom, who had tried so hard her whole life to live faithfully, yeah. do good. I mean, she not did, utter a bad she, word, drink caffeine, or... She was just true blue and, and yeah. But not... Yeah, and, it, and it just seemed like crap. Yeah. I just couldn't <laughs> believe it. I couldn't agree with it. Interesting you'd have those insights. I just, uh, I was so blind and so oblivious and uh, it was just... Well, I was angry, and yeah. I think the anger spawned more. It made me yeah. question things more. Yeah, but I you're think. a thinker. I mean, you, yeah. you think things through. Things have to be logical to me, and I couldn't believe that God came from a planet next to Kolob. That, like, didn't make any sense. <laughs> so, uh, my understanding of the... <laughs> of the entire universe was, yeah, yeah I don't think so. Yeah, this doesn't make sense. Did you ever go to the bishop or um, so other leaders? Or? Sev several times it would be like, if you're struggling with something or you're upset about something, you should talk to the bishop. Yeah. Um, our bishop, when my dad died, was someone I babysat for. Oh. And uh, it was awkward Yeah. and I didn't want to talk to them. Sure. Um, he was a carpenter, not a therapist. <laughs> So I probably needed a therapist <laughs> not, or you know, a counselor to talk about my issues, my anger, my sadness. But it seemed everything in my family focused on, well, read your Book of Mormon, go talk to the bishop, get a blessing, and you'll be, you'll be better. You you'll won't be, be broken. You won't be sad. You won't be angry. And yeah. that didn't work. Oh. Just didn't. So. Yeah. So what happens in life after this? You're, you get older and... Well, you know, I graduated time. high school and moved out the, day, the next day. Did you really? Freed myself of my mom and controlling oh, church. Did she feel bad about that? Or no, she was, she was getting ready to move to Ohio without me oh, anyway, so okay. didn't really matter, <laughs> I don't think. But um, she was would check on me and would yeah. find out if I was going to church and everything anytime you had a problem oh well you know I'm having car trouble well you need to f call your bishop bishop of what like I'm in, uh, going to school <laughs> I'm living in downtown Salt Lake I'm not I don't know a bishop and yeah. everything was focused on call your release society right. your home teacher what are you something? talking yeah. about like yeah. no so I just I went complete opposite said no no thank you anytime anybody ever tried to come and visit and I'm like oh. I don't want anything to do with you. So, <laughs> Well, you did mention earlier, uh, at least to me, I think, about trying to have a testimony of the yeah. church, the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith, and that you made an effort to... I tried. Yeah. I did not, so I never really, I never read the Book of Mormon all the way. Yeah. I just couldn't. It didn't, it just, I just didn't. I couldn't. I didn't want to. Yeah. Um, I read the Bible all the way in high school. Yeah. And, um, for seminary, or was no. it just on your own? Yeah, oh, oh, man. For you. I, the books that we studied for seminary that I had to do home packets with were they were New Testament, oh. and then I thought, well, I should probably read, read the, Bible. the Old Testament. So I read the Bible, yeah. and um, but I never read the Book of Mormon. I would try. So my mom would look at us during fast 
and testimony meeting. She was like, anybody going up? You know, she didn't make us. Our parents didn't make us get yeah. up and bear our testimony. But you it was just, just expected. All, everybody in to. Yeah. <laughs> everybody in the ward did. Everybody got up and said the exact same thing and sat back down and cried a little. I don't And I can tell that bothered you. <laughs> it really did. I didn't feel like anything was coming from the heart. truth. Yeah. Like yeah. Interesting. So uh you begin a, a Christian journey of yes. sorts. And how's that uh Tell us a little bit about that and what happens Well, next. after years of trying to figure out who I was and what I believed, um, my, so my, I, my, I've been married for 16 years, and my husband used to always say, well, maybe I'm deist or maybe I'm agnostic. And I would be like, well, explain that. What is that? I don't know, you know? And because I knew I wasn't Mormon. I just wasn't. I didn't believe it. I didn't believe Joseph Smith. Again, doctrinally or just I didn't believe Joseph or? Smith translated gold plates from a hat with rocks in it. Like, I didn't believe that. Okay. I didn't believe... You knew that? Yeah. Okay, you were um, aware of it? I knew that not to be true, and I didn't believe in priesthood. I didn't believe in levels of heaven, and I didn't believe in eternity that way, you know? Yeah. And I didn't believe I'd be a goddess, like, or a heavenly mother of some sort. Polygamy? But I, oh, <laughs> polygamy? What, that's one of those things that I questioned immediately as a child. Like, I would argue with my parents because it seemed it was just wrong yeah so as my husband and I were trying to figure out you know we would talk about things his mom is LDS my mom is LDS and um, had he been raised in the church yeah oh, okay. yeah he stopped going when he was about 14 oh. he just said this is I mean he was sick of being the only person that could bless the sacrament and pass it out in his ward and he's just like just no I don't want to do this anymore no yeah no youth ward. no yeah. youth yeah and so he just stopped going because there was no point and um my sister, this during this time, my sister was living in Texas and going to Watermark. Yeah, oh, and the church. Yeah, oh, well, right. yeah, it's a pretty great church. Yeah. Um, would go down to visit several times a year, and she'd take me to Watermark, and I loved it. Had you ever been in a Christian church before? Never. Well, nope. What, what I'd never think? experienced a Christian church. The, yeah. I loved it. I loved the music. I liked the energy of the people. I love that you could wear whatever you wanted. Um, <laughs> you didn't that have to be in a uniform. <laughs> that was a big thing for me because growing up, you wanted to you wanted to go to ZCMI, you remember the days? Oh, sure. To get a nice dress for church. Like, yeah. you didn't want to have to wear Sears, you know, <laughs> or Walmart or whatever. And it was there was a big issue with, like, the way you looked, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, and people making fun of people. It just drove me crazy. And I loved it. I could wear jeans or it was Texas, super hot, tank top, shorts, go to church with Tara. It was awesome. <laughs> well, did, did you um, just see, obviously see the differences between Mormonism and, and Christianity? Was it about Jesus? Did you feel more or did you sense that? First, I sensed acceptance Yeah. and um, a difference in the people and the way that they thought. Yeah. Not ju being so judgmental, maybe. Yeah, and just that's one thing I noticed. Was that yeah, there's just no judgment. To, there's you're not and looking no, down and no pressure, people. you know. Yeah. And yeah, focused on this other thing, you know, and not themselves. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And the first time Tara took me to Watermark, people were, I thought so weird because they were like, "I love Jesus." Just. Like, and raise their hands yes, and, and <laughs> pray. Amen, amen, you know? And yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. But I liked it. I yeah. liked it instantly. And I realized there was something else. And it was pretty cool. Yeah. But, you know, I would go back home to Utah and just go back to my regular life, work, school, just not, and life. Just not be too religious or mm -hmm. anything particular. Just still trying to kind of figure it out. I would yeah. still get a lot of pressure from my mom. And yeah. are you visiting your ward? She would Hoping she would transfer our records every time we moved. Okay. Um, my mom, mom or my grandparents or somebody yeah. or maybe yeah. my mother-in-law. I don't know. But um, <laughs> then Tara moved to Utah. And Tara and I were 15 months apart. We're really close, really close sisters, best yeah. friends. We've always been best friend of me yeah. and best friends and she started going to Lifeline and invited me to Easter and so I went and I was like oh man church uh, you know but the pastor was different and it was more um, 
theological and it seemed like an education rather than sitting down and listening to people regurgitate mm -hmm. their sadness of their life or <laughs> things that made them happy or whatever kind of like or you know sa typical mormon sacrament meeting was just well, never <laughs> appealed to me i people would get up and tell us you know read a bible verse and tell a story and cry and i'm like I'm not learning anything from well, you. Well, my experience too, and I, it kind of reflected back on it, but it just seemed like it was always about tithing or family history or going to the temple or doing yeah. your home teaching. Work, work, work. Yeah, work, work, work. Uh, you know, honesty, there are a few, few things and they're very topical though, mm -hmm. where going to a Christian was like verse by verse and you're, like you say, an education in, in the Bible. and about like This is what this verse of Ecclesiastes really means. Yeah. Because this is everything that's happening in the world around it. Yeah. And I'd never thought about it. You know, people root, say a verse here, there, everywhere. Yeah. But what the, does that verse really mean? Uh, in context. Yeah, in context. And yeah. we never studied the Bible like that. Mm -hmm. Even though we did the Bible in seminary, it wasn't really. Everything no. converted back to this verse in DNC or oh, yeah. in the Book of Mormon or whatever. Yeah. And it was never really the real true stories. Yeah. And that's what we're supposed to read. That's God's word for us. That's his well, that's direction for our lives, not all think. these other little verses that they look great on the wall. <laughs> But what do they mean? Yeah. So. So the Bible does mean a little differently to you now. A lot differently. <laughs> a, a whole lot. Especially, um, I took a theology, bibliology, and prolegomena. Oh my Lots goodness. of big words. Wow. Class from our pastor, Is that like um, a Brian Bible Hurlbut. Study? It's a college level Bible study, and it freaked me out because I didn't know anything. I realized I'm like, I'm ignorant. I don't know anything. My husband and I took it together. Yeah. And um, last really spring, good, huh? and it was like, we don't, we don't know anything. And you almost think, gosh, how could we talk about Jesus and God and the Bible week after week after week at church? And yet the more you get into it, the more you And <laughs> never learn actually anything we, real about... We don't know anything about it. No. There's so much to learn. Yeah. yeah. The covenants, I didn't even really understand. The old is, is, uh, Abrahamic covenant yes. and all that stuff. Yeah. Yep. So it was a yeah. huge eye-opener for me. Yeah. And uh, October, let's see, October 2013? I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Uh, I. year and a half ago? Yeah, a year and a half happened? ago. I just said that I give up. And I, I'm letting go of everything else, and I'm committing my life to Christ, and... I prayed in my room alone and told my sister a month later because oh, I just didn't so feel excited. like I was ready to tell her yet. And yeah, she was super excited. Oh, so what happened? What prompted you to? We were, I don't you know. Just, were you going to church? Oh, yes. were you going to church then? Uh, yeah, we were going almost every Sunday. Yeah. At first, I was going alone, taking my kids. My kids loved it. Yeah. So my kids had never been to church because I was so anti take your kids to church because yeah. I was so angry at my parents. Um, and they loved it. And they were the ones that kept saying, let's go. Are we going to church your on kids Sunday? Would say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <'cause laughs> Not they, something you had said when no. you were a young, young person. <laughs> and um, so we, we would go, and my husband would not. And yeah. a few months in, I said, you know, I don't really like going and sitting alone. And he said, oh, okay. So he started going. Had he been to church before, to a Christian church? Did he go with, to Texas? With, no. He, he Wait, maybe he did. He might have gone once in Texas. Yeah. Um, but and he started seeing a difference. People's, and... people's passion kind of scared him because uh, he was only ever used to very yeah, reserved very reason, hymns yeah. and <laughs> sure. reverent behavior. Um, so he was like, oh, that's weird. So the music was too much for him. And yeah, yeah. Raising hands <laughs> and I was like, like, I love this yeah, music. Yeah. So, um, but he started going he with started me going? because I told him I didn't want to go alone. Sure. And then um, he was like, this just makes so much more sense, you know? Really? And I realized something had changed in him, in him when he had an argument with his mother oh. um, about baptisms for the dead. And I was like, <laughs> you really are a Christian. And I, later I said, you really are. You, you're not just going to church with me anymore. He's like, nope, I'm not. I really am. I'm, 
I'm 100 percent in. And Did you? I am for wasn't Jesus. Wasn't that wonderful? It was pretty cool because yeah. you know we hadn't really talked about it, talked about it because yeah. I didn't want to pressure him. Sure. And he said he didn't want to confuse me or while well, he was trying to figure out his stuff, we kind yeah. of were more. Do it if you want, but I really hope. And so did, is this what prompted then the October 13 thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, yep. You, you just decided, you know, I'm, I need to be in or out. In or out, yeah. And, you know, everybody says, everyone has a story. A lot of the women that I know have said, oh, you know, the moment I was born again, all, it was all this big thing, all this big change or, you know, something yeah. big. And, and it was, I just made the decision and I just felt better. And I said my prayer and I was okay I don't I I didn't have like a big yeah. sunshine and roses I, I didn't and either fireworks but, but there's no question but you're, a, you're a new creature absolutely absolutely yeah I, yeah I think that's the phrase I like best is mm -hmm. I just feel I'm totally different I read the Bible the words of the Bible the cross yeah does that mean the anything cross. different to you now yes i used to ask my mom why we couldn't wear a cross because i would see these beautiful cross why necklaces I and i wanted one that? and she said well we don't wear the cross no because we don't focus on jesus's death yeah. we focus on his life and i was like well no and then as as i got older i was like well he died for us why can't yeah. we focus on that but the cross was like this ugly thing in our family. Yeah. And it definitely still like freaks my grandparents out or my aunts and uncles when I wear a cross around them. Right. But, but yet, now we understand where the shed blood, where the atonement took place, the paying for our sins. And yeah, not in a garden, the in cross. the Garden of Gethsemane, but on the cross. Yeah. And, and I think the biggest difference is understanding the true Jesus is, is understanding that it was Jesus is God and God is Jesus and God is both. And... Yeah. Um, that he wasn't once a man. No, or... not my big brother or, <laughs> you know, um, that just really understanding that God would do that for us yeah. and understand us and, the and to know that God wasn't just some guy before living on yeah. earth somewhere or a planet and um, did all his good works to go and make a bunch of spirit babies and make a whole new earth. Like... <laughs> And this free gift of grace. Yes. We, yeah. Did you understand that as a Latter Day Saint? No. 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 I knew you grace. had. You had to pay your tithing. You had to all that stuff that keeps you temple worthy or whatever. Yeah. That was like the only way you were going to heaven. And sure. then everybody that wasn't sealed to you was just yeah. going to be lost forever. They'd be all on their own, and and the whole forever family thing's just <laughs> so confusing and sad and tragic. Yeah. And very little praise to, to Jesus and God. And very what little, done. all about prophets. and. Yeah. Well, Melanie, we're almost done. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> do you have anything that, we've got about a minute left, do you have anything that you'd share with your family or friends or Mormons? Um, well, I would always, I'm always inclined to say not very nice things, a oh. little like you're brainwashed and crazy. Um, <laughs> but you won't say that, of course. But no. I did. You did. <laughs> um, but then the flip side of that is that there is freedom and happiness and love out there that yeah. that they're denying themselves yeah. and their families. You know, families being so important to yeah. LDS people, I don't... And Christians actually have value. Yes. Values. Yes, right? yes. I mean, um, life is, you know, hard enough. Why would you yeah. add extra layers? Hey, well, I sure appreciate you coming and sharing your story, Melanie. And Thanks. So, appreciate you watching and look for another installment of the Ex-Mormon Files. See ya.